quick thank you to this video's summertime sponsor, Puddin's Fab Shop. Here at Puddin's Fab Shop, we're releasing some merchandise to help you beat the heat. Available now, gray Mama Dear Ain't No Punk shirt in stock. They even come with sleeves. Do you like gray and you like tank tops, but you don't like ripped off sleeves? Ka-chow, you're in luck, because I've got the what'd you say to me, bro, in stock now. I feel weird wearing this. Yeah, it's way better. Then if this way, you get a free headband as well. But what if gray ain't your color? First white t-shirts ever. Just got the logo on the front and back. Man, that looks sharp. I'm gonna go sit it down before I stain it. Part of our summertime deal as well, boonie hats available. Now they cost us a lot to have made, so we have to sell them for a lot. That's how business works. They'll be here Monday when this video drops, so you can see them at the website, puddlesfabshop.com. Oh, I hear you, the women are like, where's our shirts? I hope you women like black, because these only come in black, and we did get the women's shirts, whatever these are, Bella Canvas Erlen Jersey. Very limited quantities available in the sizes we could get. And lastly, but not leastly, it's a shirt I can't even show you guys. I'm gonna have to show you a picture. How many, what's the month on that? 704, 704 of them. Once they're gone, they're gone. These shirts are gonna come in the day this video drops. They're available today, and we're gonna ship them out ASAP, trying to get them to you guys by the 4th of July. I cannot guarantee you that, unfortunately. I can guarantee you we're gonna try our hardest with everything we have going on. Me and my family, thank you guys for the continued support. I thank you guys for letting me interrupt my own video. And there's still always like three people who gotta complain in the comments. At least you didn't have to watch a cell phone video game ad or something like every other YouTuber. Oh yeah, time to get that beet juice. Fresh new batch. Uh, I clicked on a video about a wagon. Why is this gentleman dancing, talking about beet juice? A nice little purple cocktail. Ah. If you would have asked me a month ago if my favorite drink would be beet juice, I would have called you crazy, but uh, I'm hooked on that stuff now. So, this week, we are back on our wagon. We're also back to recording next to a super busy, loud, noisy highway. My favorite. And in fact, guys, I don't even know where we left off on our wagon because in the last month and a half, I've had so much craziness going on that uh, I'm I'm as lost as an eight-day clock around here. I'm gonna erase some of this top secret information. Wiring, power steering, coolant, front bumper, distributor wires, oil. We need to uh, 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 prime that thing somehow, preferably, because we've never had this engine running before. And then service transmission. Steering ain't happy, forgot about that. And bleed brakes. Now on top of that, guys, I ain't even done nothing about exhaust yet. Uh, we may end up taking it to exhaust shop. I may have to get a kit for it, I don't know. On top of that, there's gonna be some wiring to sort. Do not have this harness yet, been waiting on it. Uh, that is no good right there. So will it be done by the end of this week? Probably not gonna happen. But can we get it fired up and at least try putting it in drive or, you know, seeing if these trans cooler lines that I built, are these suckers gonna hold or are they gonna blow? Who knows? That sucker blows. All right, speaking of transmission lines, that's kind of what the old beet juice looks like, some old dirty transmission fluid. Hey, Ma, Puddin's in the shop drinking his tranny fluid again. Oh, we got birds fighting. Little bird whooping out whooping that big old bird. Bird was like, get away from my tree, son. Hey, it ain't the size of the bird, guys. It's the power of his little pecker that he pecks him with. Little bird with a small pecker, but it knows how to use it to attack properly. Could probably fight off a big bird with a big pecker. They just peck, peck, peck them birds. So, we want to do everything we can uh, underneath there. That's why I've left it on jack stands. I ain't pulled it off. Uh, the transmission... We started to serve as it last go around, and well, you see how that ended for me. Yeah, that's because uh, I was kind of dumb. I am started to service it as our uh, transmission speedo gear housing unit is entirely missing. Good news is we got all that right here. So also not very smart of me. I do believe this gear has to go on our uh, output shaft for the transmission. Uh, so I'd put the drive shaft in. I think we're gonna have to pull the drive shaft out so we can take the tail housing off 
and then this has to go on then everything else got to go back together so basically we get to undo some of what we already did and that that my friends is how you you just got to learn sometimes okay it's part of it if you don't know and no one can teach you and you don't use common sense well you teach yourself the hard way i am pretty good at teaching myself the hard way can anyone guess where she was leaking oh there is a gear on there but all this stuff right here is supposed to work with the gearing we have our 373s and our tire size so this should get our speedo super duper close theoretically step one remove your carrier bearing bolts complete step two Woo! flick that bug away get out of here little buggy step three we get to pull these back out Step four, don't lose your hardware. Well, oh, said that and dropped one. Classic pudding. Be sure to get both sides. Ugh. There we go, pop her on out of there. These are a 15. This socket set hops from 14 to 16. How convenient. Yep. She's a little sore, but I'm starting to get that motion back, ain't I? Oh yeah, it's coming back. And so we need right there, chrome jobber. Put them in your little hidey hole. And that should come off there. So how does that attach to that? We have a little look-see here. We got some type of clip, I guess, that just holds that. I don't really know what I'm doing here. It has some wiggle to it. It'll wiggle there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Then that's got that little tang or whatever you call that thing. Is that pushing that hole? You dang right it does. Well, how do you know which hole do you go into? I don't know. The bad news is it does appear this new gear is the exact same one because we can line them edges up and it matches all the way around. I was kind of guessing that these may be color coded. I don't know if that's true or not, uh, but I noticed like this one's a green color. So we're going to pop this back on there. I don't know which hole that needs to go in. And we may just kind of fiddle with it and see, but obviously that'll go on that shaft. Then when that's all together, this goes in there and that meshes like that guys. And it's just gears, It's just gears, you know, simple gear geometry. It's how gears work. That's how they've always worked. This right here is a spiral cut flax tater uh, benjamin gear the kit here came with a new clip so we will install it there you go so i think it came out of the first hole so we're going to try it back in the first hole i don't know it's kind of looking like it wouldn't line up as well that gear's already fancy in this side and we still got to push that tail housing back no big deal. Pop that clip slider back of here. It's gonna be a professional transmission man by the end of the day. That looks like it's gonna line up real better. Professional transmission man and possibly an English teacher as well. Real better. That was good. Hey pudding, how's she looking? Oh, she's looking real better. Oh yeah, she pretty well lined up right in the middle. Y'all heard of a bench test, but how about a belly test? Right here, if we belly test it, you can see it pretty well has to line up straight to mesh correctly. That's how I came up with my little educated guess here. Oh, just had to get her wiggled right. She popped in. Of course, her little retaining clip right here goes just like that. Lock her down. Don't forget these bolts. I almost forgot to put those two back in. That's probably frowned upon. Yeah, that's the guy who only has two bolts in his transmission house, and that's him. Drive shaft going back in. We're moving like a damn rocket ship. You know what? We're going to hit a little touch-up paint just for our third member here, because when it got rebuilt, I'm guessing it got cleaned on and we lost some. And y'all know we are doing a top-quality restoration here. Just ask the custom paint and body work. This thing will make paint shake and boots quake. And don't mess around. And dang, today, Junior. Don't touch it.
When you get done and your can looks like that, because uh, it's getting plum buck nasty, the can is hot. That's how you know it's ready. Oh yeah. And then it just sprays like you hit the double chalupa meal from the Taco Bell. If it sprays like that, you know you're golden. Rattle can Dan's back in action, baby. Oh yeah, we'll spin her around. We'll get the uh, the whole whole shebang. Yeah, that'll look a little better. Rattle can Dan reports for duty. I'm about to go report somewhere else for duty. That beet juice is getting me. Yeah, she looks a little better. She ain't perfect, but nothing is. Let's get her slapped all the way back together. Good. Now we're kind of back where we started, but now we're not gonna leak. I bet the Speedo cable that come on this car is probably too short. All right, here it is. Got it all wedged up in our brake lines. Of course, from the factory, this would have hooked up to our power glide transmission, so I didn't figure it'd reach back on this one. But it does look like I was wrong. And it'll work or it won't. Our next little problem with the transmission is I was kind of counting our quarts as we went in, uh, but then of course they started leaking out. So I don't know how much fluid is in there. We need to service it, so uh, we'll top it off with some. So I seen this unit at the store the other day and I didn't have one of these for like filling up the dipstick and not making a mess. So yeah, that's a solid investment right there. She, large engine funnel, I would say so. Ideal for transmission fluids. Oh yeah, that big funnel's just what we needed. I like that. I think we had like one or two in the converter. We put like five or six in before we started spilling. Uh, we'll probably put these two in and leave it and then after we finally get it fired up we'll we'll check her again we want every little drop of beet juice we can get right there left hand hook shot see how consistent i am don't matter if i do a left hand hook shot or a behind the back snickerdoodle kick with the right foot i stack them perfectly on top of each other back there when you're good, you're good. All right, next big thing to do, uh, one of my least favorite things to do, lead brakes, especially on a fresh built uh, 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 brake system, guys. We've built most of the hard lines on this thing, and yeah, that could be fun sometimes. Probably wouldn't be such a big deal if I wasn't relying on like a $24 flaring tool. I should probably invest into a better one. But it got me this far in life, I reckon. Boy, we're gonna be in trouble. I thought I had a big old thing of brake fluid and I guess I don't. That's a little better. Come to our passenger side rear to make sure our bleeder was closed here. I noticed our bump stop was rubbing our brake line a little bit. Of course, as that travels down, it's gonna hit that more. So I'm gonna have to trim on that just a little more. Definitely don't want to hit our brake line though, so we got to be careful here. Luckily that bump stop's pretty soft like good rubber, which is surprising. Yeah, super surprising. Nice soft rubber. I obviously did not replace those. I know it looks like I trimmed a lot off, but I really didn't. The thing is still plenty wide for a bump stop. She'll still do her job. It wasn't rubbing hard, probably wouldn't have ever had a problem out of it, honestly, but better safe than sorry, I reckon. Our bleeder's right there, I'm gonna get her cracked open, and we're gonna start with the pneumatic suck job. And we'll put some air to this and just turn her on and she'll start doing the sucking for us. Leak number one detected. Yeah, I don't think I ever tightened that. Now something back here is leaking as well. I don't see any brake fluid on the front. So it's one of, yeah, it's the one on this side. A little tube nut for our uh, hard line. I kind of had a feeling this was how this was gonna go. 
Got a turn on it there. Maybe I got our two leaks to the rear fixed. Uh, our fluid was not dropping very fast. Of course, if you're trying to pull vacuum like we're doing, and you got two areas for it to pull air, you're not gonna pull a good vacuum. This sucker here, I just don't think I ever tightened down. And then our little lines, guys, I get real nervous about over torquing it and cracking it. Uh, so I always get them pretty snug, but I'm never surprised when I get a little drip out of them. Then I go and snug them a little more. And I don't know, I don't know that it makes me feel better, but I'm always worried about overdoing it. So I underdo it and then get her where she needs to be. So with that full, I'm hoping we turn this on. We start seeing that drop and that leak goes away. I can see that dropping. That's good. We're not leaking here. Swapped her to this side. You can just see that hose whipping, whipping, whipping. Yeah, it's pulling fluid good on this side. I'm dropping it pretty quick because I just topped that off. So personally, guys, I can never get a good brake pedal using this uh, vacuum thing. But I usually like to do myself. I, uh, I pull fluid through it, kind of flush out the system, uh, use it as an opportunity to check for leaks like that. But the only way I ever uh, get a good brake pedal myself is the old school. You got to pump it, uh, have someone hold it, then you bleed it and cut it off. That's how I always get a good pedal. Uh, but how we just did the rear, working our way around and checking leaks. Now I'm going to hop to the front and knock it out the same way. How many of the brake lines were leaking? Bill, I ain't seen you in a month and a half, and that's what you want to know? Yeah, I just <laughs> did my brake lines. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> leaking right there, there, and one on the rear, and that that's it. it. That's it. Where that's were what you? I was wondering. How many leaks I'm going to have? Yeah. Mine's all brand new, too. Just one of those things where it's like so finicky. I know. I just, and, and then when I did mine, it wasn't like no big deal. And I was looking at yours, I was like, man, look how nice that it came out and stuff. You want to give it three or four pumps and then let me know when you're good. Uh oh. Right. Yeah, we're leaking. Making a mess and a half. We were leaking right at that banjo I tightened on her some. I think we're good. Now, it looks like I'm still getting a little drop out of this banjo bolt. Well, so much for our fixed our couple leaks, Bill. <laughs> Got a couple more. Yeah, that vacuum just, it don't. Put the pressure to it. Come to find out, we're leaking right here. So if you have one you can't get to seal, guys, uh, be ready to kind of shake on it. Pop that sucker loose, kind of shake on it and tighten it back up real quick. Right there on the banjo bolt, just like we suspected. This is good guys, we'll make sure to knock our paint off of all these new parts. Perfect. Now this one was loose. What is it? Yeah, you can pump on this one. This other side I believe still leaking. Did you let off? Yeah. That side's gonna seal up. I don't think this side's going to. All right, just swapped out our washers real quick. See if that'll do the trick. Still leaking. Still leaking? What the hell, over? Leaking? Yep. Really? God bless America. Land that I love. No, I think I see a little bit coming. You gotta be shitting me. Better because it's starting to get a pedal. And I like banjo bolts. Go again. Your leg giving out yet? No. <laughs> yeah, that ain't nothing to your bike ride, is it? No. By golly, I think we may have got it. Just took 12 sets of copper washers. We'll keep an eye on it though, because I don't trust it now. No, I heard some pressure that time. Okay. Oh yeah, I can hear fluid flowing now. Of course, I'm keeping this on here, trying to keep it from uh, shooting fluid everywhere, guys. I don't see our leak back on this side, which is good. No more leaks up top. Bill's been topping her off as we go here, watching us up there. It's starting to get a pedal. So if you ain't ever bled brakes, guys, you don't want to run out of fluid because then you're putting air back in your system. And right now we're trying to get air out the system. So just like we did that one there, guys, we're going to work our way around. I don't expect to find any more leaks. I think we've got them all handled now. 
so I don't want to have to keep moving the camera stopping you know Bill's over there just a pumping and I'm messing up his pump game for us so we're gonna knock these out oh shit oh man yeah okay it's getting a pedal now yeah okay that's a good one there Boy, I'm glad going from there to there to there went a lot better than everything previous to that. <laughs> oh, wild man, Bill, get her topped off. How's the pedal feeling in there, Bill? Good feeling. Think she'll stop like a Jaguar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> this ain't going to be no 1961 grandma wagon with the drum brakes on one single line, is it? No. You better be careful if you're riding in the back if I slam on the brakes because you may be in the front with me. <laughs> oh, what a sweet moment right here. Well, I owe you, Bill, so you get ready to do your truck, let me know. That way we can celebrate this sweet moment on your truck, too. The sweet moment of calling that D-U-N. It's done. Hmm. Oh, I think we're sitting good. I think we're sitting good. I think we're sitting good, good, good. Uh, I, I really am that excited about how the brakes do. Well, I got to work on my damn cardio, all that little dancing, and I'm already huffing and puffing. So I've kind of looked into the steering before, and this is the rag joint that, uh, well, this is a factory steering shaft thingy, majigger right here. That end right there goes up in there. This end down here does not go on there. So us adding that power steering box, uh, change that. Yeah, is this what I'm looking for? Let's go see. It should be. Now, I think it's 30 spline or 36 spline. I can't remember spline counts. Whichever this one is, that's right, because it just slid on there. So let's put this on here. And we'll mock it up. We'll set our little set screw. That holds real nice. We interrupt this program for a little sweet treat. Speaking of sweet treat, there's my beautiful wife. We've got to run out to the other place real quick, just verify some colors or something. Colors confirmed. It does not take long to get this shop hot once you close her down. Now we cannot get this down into place because this rag joint is so big and in the way. So let's go whack it off. Oh yeah. Usually I'm a, a slice and dice kind of person. I didn't feel like pulling out our extension cord. Be careful grabbing that joint. Tastes like chocolate. <laughs> Ow. Luckily I left that Allen wrench sticking up there. That way I had somewhere to drag them knuckles across. Go for a little bit of a spline inspection and these are not the prettiest things I've ever seen. Got my little file here, and I guess we're gonna spend the delicate time it takes to go around here and clean up all these suckers. Just got about 30 more to go, perfect. Go try it. Oh, that thing ain't even splined. That's literally just a clamp. So we're pushing against where that's grooved before. We just need to spread that sucker open. Here we go, a few love taps to motivate it. Should have done that from the start. I'm hot, leave me alone, don't judge me. Now there is a groove where that bolt has to go in at a certain spot, I do believe though. I guess our bolt's gonna be difficult next. So we gotta get that where we want it. I guess that bolt really don't matter because uh, it didn't make a damn difference a bit. So with this where we want it, this we bring down. And what we need to do is now mark these uh, where it needs to cut. We're gonna do two marks. I got this one here, which is where we need to quit machining. And right here, which is where we need to cut it. Pull that off there. And here's our two marks, guys. What I wanna do is we wanna cut this down right there. Uh, but then this other shaft I want to have it machined for this DD shaft style fitting. Now I have a buddy who has a mill and I can have this machined where it's right and proper. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Damn sweat's killing me. However, I'd, I have not always had that option. So if it was, if I did not have that option, here's a couple things that you could try to do if you wanted. Option one would be to cut this back 
and just buy some DD shaft. You don't need much. They sell short little pieces online and uh, we could cut that way back. We could find the metal sleeve that would sleeve onto this. Then you sleeve this inside of that. You weld it all up and you end up with DD shaft sticking out. Other thing we could do, we could uh, kind of figure out how wide that needs to be and we could kind of flap attack that and flatten the sides. We could stick it in there and weld that. Uh, this shaft straight to this joint if we wanted and you may have enough room to slip it in and out of there i would tack it check it then weld it uh, neither one of those options i want to go with i would rather have this done proper right especially on this wagon because we ain't really been cutting corners yet mark them up that way i don't lose our, our marks on there and i'll get with my buddy and see if our schedules can't somehow work out where he can take care of that for us the next thing is I don't know about our power steering lines. They're kind of tight fitting looking. I ordered replacement ones for that 77 Caprice that we uh, robbed our accessories from. Just, you know, giving this thing the eagle eye, I don't think it's gonna go. Get our little caps off of here, guys. And this GM500 steering box, this one up here, that's gonna be our return. This one's gonna be our supply. This is an awful lot of hose for no more than what we're trying to do here. You know, guys, uh, this is just, some of them details of getting a build together unless you just know the part number you need i think we're gonna have to go look for what we need these ones just got too much craziness going on and i think we're just gonna take the tow roller and she's a little dirty if you didn't see last week's second channel video you're missing out battery about dead on the winch not seeing a whole lot of nothing back here with inverted flare, which is what we need. Mm -hmm. No dice, guys. I figured we would at least seen one to choose from, but we didn't see none. Next stop, time for a little custom machining action. Right there, if we could cut it. Cut it off? And then, yeah, okay. that's the area we need to machine for the <laughs> DD. About in there, is that is that proper machinist terms? I About guess. in there? It's, your mark's going, so it works. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'm gonna come in and cut down both sides and make the D. It's a little under 550 thousandths and we'll be pretty close. He knows what he's doing. That's why I'm here. Cause if I was doing it, we would already ground the shaft and welded it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever showed him your truck here, Randy. It's slick. And he drives the fire out of it. That's the best part. Survey says survey says randy's the man once again that's tight but perfect not not like it's got to be pressed on there tight but there ain't no slip in it look how much nicer that looks than hobgobbling something together now i understand some of y'all do not have machinist friends with lathes and mills in their shop and everything but if you could source a local shop they are not going to charge you an arm and a leg to do something like that if it's something you care about and you want to do it right, uh, that's the right way to do it, guys. We're going to pick up this morning where we left off yesterday with our little steering shaft here. Get her where I want her to stop right there. And I'm going to tighten this down, actually. And I'm going to cinch down that set screw, and it should mark our metal for us. Yep, it sure did. Next, we're going to mark the center of our mark. I'll drill her down a little bit. That should be big enough for a set screw. Oh, just perfect. Has a 5 16 hole. These are metric set screws. But yep, feels like we nailed that sucker perfect. So now I better back up my gym nut. Because guys, we can run that down. And uh, it shouldn't be able to... The set screw will hold it, but I don't know. Always doing that just makes me feel better. Now there's absolutely no single doubt in my mind this will all go together. So before we put it together, we're gonna get her painted up. 
And before we get her painted up, apparently at some point someone nicked that sucker up with their locking pliers or something. And by somebody, I'm, I'm sure I know who did it. She's ready for paint. Quick little prep Rui. Slap her in the paint booth. Y'all are gonna get tired of that shaker before I do, I promise you that. This is great paint, one light coat, let it set up, don't push your luck. So as that sets up, now I told you yesterday no dice on our power steering lines. Uh, what I did not tell you was I ordered a couple. So these are inverted flare lines, guys. At the parts house, they literally didn't have like any inverted flares to choose from. It's all that other O-ring style. It's like a straight pipe or a straight piece with a little lip and you put an O-ring on there. So I don't know if inverted flare power steering lines are pretty uncommon. If that, they're some rare birds, they may be. Uh, we looked up power steering lines for the Caprice again. And what was helpful was uh, that Caprice had like four power steering pumps to choose from which also meant it had like four different sets of power steering lines to choose from. So these ones are the ones they show for a car with no power, uh, no, no smog. I almost said no power steering. <laughs> Look at her supply line. Pretty significant difference, guys. Both ends, totally different. This return kind of has like a 45-ish, and it's just cut to length. Eagle eye in it. I think we've got way better chances of making these new ones work, so let's go see what happens here. That sucker barely threads into there. That probably ain't good. I'm gonna strip her out. That ain't good. Yeah, she'll tighten down some more, though. It'll seal her, it won't. That swoops around that way good. Now over here, if this was kind of bent more, we need to get it down into there. So we gotta try to bend this. Uh, it seems to me like if we had take this bend out right here where this is turning, and then we left this mark here as the top, and somewhere in here, we could bend a 90 down. Uh, we could maybe get that on there. Well, I don't know this is gonna work. Oh man, my uh, my flare there got over into our vise. We gotta be careful. I don't think it messed up our front where we got a seal. I'll knock down these burrs. I'm trying to use this nut as what's actually bending this tube. So I'm gonna try to hold a little pressure on it and tap it right here where I want it to bend some. And you see where it was kind of wanting to start to kink, but I stayed moving it. Uh, let's go see how that's fitting. Actually, we better get our second coat of paint on before we forget. Now let's look at this. Start at this side, guys. Uh, if I do it this way, we're going to clear our A-arm. It runs our lines up here, and that's going to keep us out of our steering and stuff down there. Forgot to mention, I came and determined that before I bent that, so I made that mark right there where I knew that's... We needed to turn a 90 that away. And that sucker just started. Honestly, I don't love seeing that there, but it ain't that bad either. We'll take it. Oh, that feels like it's stripping. That does not feel good. Something ain't right. Yep, something just happened. What the hell? Now that threads into some little adapter thing so we can unthread it and see what's going on here maybe. So that's our piece there. So we may have boogered up our thread on our hose a little bit. So I actually have another one of these. Keep it in my back pocket. Nah, I just pulled out that shelf. <laughs> uh, I have this one left over from when I built my truck. I'm just gonna see if by chance this uh, starts in here any better. It seemed to start a lot better. I'm gonna try tightening it up right here. We'll do a little bench testing. Yeah, that seems to tighten up fine. Everything else looks the same on them. I can definitely tell they're manufactured by uh, different people, but we're gonna try to put this in there, and if it works, we're gonna go with it. Throw it in there, baby. Throw it in there. Throw it in there. Come on. There it went. 
Now that thing O-ring seals, so we just gotta snug it down. We ain't gotta smoke it to Alabama. Yep. Oh yeah, that's pretty snug right there. Guys, usually I ain't got little odds and ends like that. That's some like Mortsky type stuff. Like, oh, this is the uh, splinter valve with the check receding hole right here. I keep 17 of them in my little drawer. That was just pure luck, guys. Uh, I still don't know that it's gonna seal up, but if that happened to you, that's just manufacturer. You know, that piece over there is bad. Next up, that threads right in. Nice and snug. She might look like she's rubbing, but she's not. Pressure line on. And this would probably work as is, but we may put a little more 90 in that. So we could thread that like that and let this sucker swoop plumb up here to Indiana, then come back down to Louisiana. Then it could pop up there just, you know, next to Arkansas. And uh, yeah, that would clamp on. Hoping there's enough room on this, we can actually get it on our bender. Oh, she go? Yeah, may got a little. Just ain't quite got enough tube to be able to whoop it around. So we'll clamp it up and I'm gonna kind of try to use it as a jig here. And we're gonna tap on this and bend it around that. And tape our tube nut up, cause that's what we actually wanna hammer on. Yeah, that actually started to kink it a little more than I thought it was. It didn't kink it bad. I kind of went to mock that up and I realized I have my head up my hind end right now. Because right where we put that and that's going to work for us, maybe where our steering stuff is. It's going to be one of them days, huh? Let's slap our steering on. That way we make sure we're not screwing ourselves there. There's actually a fingertip in between there, which is good. Yeah, that's tight. Mm. Tighten that one. Mm. Torque both our jam nuts. I'm gonna go spin it. And we actually are clearing, but I can bend on that a little bit like that right there. Get us a little more clearance. It'll work, guys. Sometimes the plan works out, other times you're lucky. So far, we've just been really lucky. Yeah. Steering shaft is tightened up. It's completely done. Looks like this return may have actually been the perfect length because with how that turned to 90, I actually had to swoop around here and go underneath our steering shaft for the return. And once again, nothing's rubbing. So now we just gotta kinda make up for our slack here and tighten this down. Yeah. Slow and steady. It's a big old fun on a big old jug, and if I ain't careful, we'll have a big old mess. Good thing I stopped and checked it. Because we just about had that big old mess I was talking about. Steering done. Power steering done. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Now that's not as satisfying as getting the brakes bled, but also I knew they were going to be a little tricky, so I'm glad they're done. Some of that big crap out the way. Now we can knock out some more of the little crap. Like uh, swapping out our starter bolts. Here's what they sold as a starter bolt. There's a proper starter bolt. So a quick little swap Some Someone thought it'd be real smart to leave all this hardware on these where if we fire it up, they'll surely vibrate off. So we probably won't grab them before we lose them. Or we can just drop them and lose them. Next, we need a little specialty bolt. A specialty bolt, I mean a cut down, just 5 sixteenths. Probably should have measured that. I did not. You should use that old eagle eye. Eagle eye is dirty right now. We're a little dirty, dirty. And this is for a little bracket right here because it's got to have a little short sucker. That's what it needed right there. I thought we needed a gasket and a thermostat, but those look tightened down and there's a gasket in there. See, I'm so good, I'm ahead and didn't even know it. So what was this for? I ain't got a clue. I know what this chrome jobber right here's for though. I think this is a style we need for this motor. Can't see the hole because I still got my earplug in there from painting it. Kind of bend her up. Yeah, that ain't too bad. Usually not a chrome dipstick kind of guy. 
But we got enough flashiness going on underneath here that that don't bug me. I mean, hell, this is a pretty flashy unit if you ask me. Yeah. I'm hoping, I don't know if it'll be today, if not today, hopefully tomorrow, we can fire this motor up and break it in. I'd prefer not to break it in uh, with no exhaust, but I can't have exhaust put on it till next week, so... Mm. We might do it without exhaust. Uh, also, I want gauges on it. Water gauge and oil gauge. This one right here, this is for our water. Should have us a plug right down in here. I thought it may be a 3 8 but it's not. It must be an Allen. <laughs> or is it a 3 8 Allen? Get her out of there. That plug is some half-inch threads, and so we need our half-inch adapter piece. Gotta have something on there to seal them threads. I like that blue stuff. Of course, that just threads right in there. Just done a one-for-one -one swap. Get that sucker tight, but don't break that brass off in your motor. You'd be having a bad day then. Now this piece, we really need to figure out where we want to route it and run it. We can shove it right through that little clip right there. Then let it come across right there. Now this guy's... That pushes in there and it seals, kind of like a flare style. So you don't need no tape or nothing. Just need to get her threaded down in there. Just torque it a little bit and it should seal up. Of course, we can dress her off here with a couple zip ties. Actually, I hate to do this, because I'll be honest, these mechanical gauges they sell nowadays, well, they're about worthless as tits on a chicken. Uh, it usually takes about two or three before you get one that actually works. Now these brand I'm putting in here, I had good luck out of them for a little bit, but the last set or two has been a little flaky. So we'll see. Try to make her look pretty anyhow. And honestly, I thought I was going to hate that going across there, but it don't look too bad. And I just realized I forgot to order the copper kit. Instead of, now we got the plastic kit. <clears throat> Maybe we will get lucky. I think at one point I did have one of them. Got all the vacuum hose you could ever possibly. Oh, baby. That right there is what we wanted to find. I'd rather just do it once and not have to do it again. So we're going to install this copper stuff instead of this plastic stuff for our oil gauge. I hope I grabbed everything because I do not want to be crawling in and out of here, especially my Steve Irwin boots. So our little adapter here, I think that's eighth inch threads. Uh, it's going to go right in there where we pulled that plug out. Of course we need to put some thread tape on there. I'm gonna rip me a piece and then I'm gonna rip that piece in half long ways. Then we can wrap it around that and we should be able to seal up with that right there. Mm, I'm gonna take that. Like you're fitting in the side, just run it down, but don't push your luck with this brass guys. You'll snap it easy. And this copper is real easy to bend and straighten out so you can work it pretty easy. You'll take that sucker there. You just slide it on like so. Then you take that little sucker and you put it on like that. Kind of cone side down. Shove her down in there. Tighten that sucker down. Then that's going to use compression and flaring and sealing. And you ain't going to let no oil come out. That's tight. As we go to run this over, we got to pay attention because we got throttle uh, right there that's got a cycle. We don't want nothing rubbing that ain't going to be rubbing. Get her going through a firewall. It popped right out here like it's happy to see us. Is that a copper coil in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? Hell, no one carries copper around. You must be happy to see me. Not gonna worry about making all that too pretty yet. Right now we're just worrying about functionality. I'm just gonna mount this. There's a screw here underneath our AC controls or HVAC controls. Looks like we may have to drill an extra hole because there's two screws there. So them screws line up, or that would line up roughly right in there-ish. We're gonna need another hole. Damn bug in there. <laughs> there's Is something there? in there. <laughs> Piece of dirt. Just telling you there's somebody's damn corn nuts, whoever assembled oh. this gauge. <laughs> Was eating some corn nuts at work. Told y'all these gauges were going downhill. Y'all thought I was lying. I don't think I've officially named this wagon yet. We could still name it Corn Nut. 
Now, no, since you've been around, we changed the name of the wagon to Wang Dangle. The good news is our holes lined up, so tighten this down. Then I'll slap the gauges right back in. Now, our oil gauge is already set up for like what we did out there. So all we need to do is slide our little pieces on here and slap this crap back together. Slap crap back together. That's the professional term. Next, we're going to look at priming this sucker. And right here, we've got Uncle Rick's a two-story tall oil priming tool that he had. He said we can cut it down. There ain't no need for it to be that tall. So he's got a, she's a little rough to turn in there. Hit her with a zinc. Zinc it up. I ain't gonna be from lack of looby dooby in there. got enough vibration for any situation now if we can get it stabbed in there and a drill on it that'll be a different story it has to have that uh, yeah it has to have it except it uh i just broke it <laughs> it's gotta have it i guarantee that sucker was never gonna fall out of there man We're doing a swap a really guys try and get it where we can put oil in here easier there's a metal baffle in our valve cover. Now this grommet here though, it's baffled as well. So if you try to fill that full of oil right there, it ain't gonna hardly flow. We're gonna cut the baffle out of this where we're not double baffled. I was double baffled on hell of hell to get this thing apart. It wasn't happening. See you, Bill. That'll flow a little better. Speaking of flowing, don't make me flow. Maybe that'll work. First up going in, we got our Lucas TB Zinc Plus Racing ZDDP Engine Break-In Oil Additive. She's designed for hot rods, classic cars, and race engines. I believe we meet all three standards. Made in the USA. I let her set where I got every bit of that. That's what I'm talking about. High dollar stuff. Can't afford to waste it. Better check her right about there. Yeah, about half quart to go. I'd already put some in our filter. And then, of course, we just put that uh, additive in there. That right there got us, looks like, right to our mark. That's dead nuts money, right to the mark. That is the cleanest oil and dipstick I've ever seen in my life. Usually, they're all tarnished. Not this one. She's a new unit. Keep that there. Our hose here, we're gonna pop it off. And we'll pop a cap on it for now. Pull our plug out of there, specialty custom plug. Right there, she dropped right in it felt like. So the question is now, can we get that on there? It looks like we may. That shaft interlocks with your oil pump down there, guys, and it should get us uh, oil going through our motor. So I wish I still had Bill here where he could look at our oil pressure gauge for us. If I'm gonna go spin it, y'all watch it. Well, did y'all see any pressure? You dang right we had a little pressure. About 70 PSI worth. I'm gonna swap us on a new battery and I'm gonna prime on it just a little more. We may pull a valve cover and look and see if we're getting oil to the top. It's quite a bit of priming. There's a few metal shavings from when we drilled our carburetor, so we don't want that falling in there. Huh, that is tricky to get off there. 
It's definitely all lubed up. That's good. Hold that side off too, just to verify, guys. But you see all the oil in there? Oil on every single rocker. This side the same way. She's plumb oiled up. Some time doing a little prime. Uh, it can be difficult to get them oiled up all the time. So that, that looks really good. Luckily got our valve cover back on there. I'll pop our priming tool out next. I reckon we can uh, try to get it to top dead center. That way we can actually stab a distributor into it. Pull our number one. Get us a little battery action. My battery tray become my catch-all here. Up and at them. Mm. Hey, yo. Uh, she is cranking, and that's not a good thing. That means our starter cable, when it got tightened, is touching the stud to our solenoid down there. I handled that well, but I may have just pooped myself a little bit. That's not what I was expecting. Break her free and just spin her right here. Then I'll tighten it up this time, not letting them uh, play a little touch grab. Better keep your hands to yourselves, no PDA. Since we're underneath here, we're gonna grab our little cheater switch. Get it on, kind of fish it out the way. That'll save me from tippy-toeing. Of course, this end goes right here. Now we can put our ground on with uh, not trying to start. She's a cranker. I'm gonna put my finger plugger right down here where number one came out of. As soon as I find the hole, there it is. And I'm gonna bump her over until it shoots my finger out. Oh, we're right there on compression stroke. Right there. She looks like she's about eight degrees before top dead center. We're pretty close. Perfect. Hot damn, Uncle Sam. Gave her a bump and just nailed it. She's at top dead center. That did not just happen. Are you shitting me? I clearly should have opened this box sooner because there ain't no chance in hell we're going to keep a red distributor cap on this thing. It's supposed to be black. Uh, red ain't going to cut it. Warranty voided if removed. Well, how do you expect someone to install one and not remove the cap, huh? Just supposed to guess where that SOB's aiming or what? I probably ain't got the clamp for this neither. Shit, talky mushrooms. Yeah, don't worry, I got your voided warranty right here. I also got a size 11 boot that says somebody's gonna get me a black cap for it. Picture showed it was black. Why did I get Honda red? Void, void, void. All right, let's go stab this unit. The slot for our oil pump's kind of running across like so. We gotta make sure that interlocks. Of course, your gear's got a mesh, and I want this kind of pointing at number one, so that's why I just rotated it some. There it went, just dropped in. We may be in bad shape because I don't think I have a little clamp. I was about to leave to go buy one of these and my neighbor called me and he said, you ain't got no blue Loctite, do you? And I said, yeah, I do. I said, you ain't got a distributor clamp, do you? And he said, yeah, I do. So we just did a little one for one swap. Get her snug down where she can still turn but won't bounce around. Guys, yesterday I spent close to two hours out here and uh, just playing grab ass mainly with some plug wires. I had ordered one set and long story short, uh, two of them were too short. It was not gonna work out. I had another set. Well, I had seven out of eight anyhow. And I got them mocked up and I realized the length of them were good, but the quality of them were absolute garbage. I took my two trash cans down to the edge of the road yesterday. Those should have been in there with them. I called the parts house and ordered that part number, but in a better brand. And uh, those did come in today. So now that's what I'm finally getting figured out here. I got her driver's side sorted. Of course, I'm using the zip tie trick. That's pretty good looking. I like how it looks. Did you run that, Bill? I'd run it. So since I had to wait on stuff anyhow, I said, why don't you send me another distributor? 
and make sure that sucker ain't red. I was just gonna stab it in there since we were there. Well, they sent another one, and we're not gonna have that discussion right now. I've been working on my blood pressure. I've been doing really good, so we're just gonna act like they didn't send me another red one uh, to <laughs> put in here. <laughs> Did you order a black one? Yes. I did too. I ordered a black one. I got a red one. <laughs> well, I got two in a row. We got to put our plug wires on this side. I already did that side. Right there's number one. A one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. Small block Chevy, one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate, Bill? Chevrolet. Yeah, because we don't like pushing. <laughs> <laughs> Pop on number two. I hate doing damn plug wires. They're not hard. Just annoying. Annoying. Now this side's gonna be held a lot easier, guys. Just popped on number four. Over there we got steering shafts. We got damn brake lines. We got, you name it, we got it. Throttle linkage. Kick down linkage. Noisy big rigs. Just about got our, uh, our zip ties here, guys. You just do one big one around them all. Then you go in between uh, each plug wire and divvy it up with another. I'm gonna take that for now. Pop our grommet on. I did get us a new uh, PCV valve since Bill broke ours yesterday. It was China, it didn't take much. <laughs> Slap Wait, that did, back on. So since you had the valve covers off, you swapped them around? Yep. Now let's get some, some water and coolant in her. Get her some of that good green stuff. Whole gallons work because mama didn't raise no punk. We're gonna find out if the heater core's whoa, good. Whoa, 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 you got a leak. Oh no! It's coming out. There's a thing on it. There ain't a drain plug at all in it. <laughs> so you wanna sit here and cover this up with your finger or you want me to find one? Yep. <laughs> you getting tired, Bill? You good? I'm good. That's like a little post stretch after that bike ride. <laughs> may not be three eighths maybe a quarter inch might be what's that we're off to a solid start good let's try this again uh got us a plug in there should probably hold coolant a little better i was like we'll get to see if our heater core leaks as a gallon's running underneath my feet <laughs> Got some distilled water. Cause that was two gallons of water. So. She got two gallons worth of the distilled water. We got about three quarter worth of that first gallon. Oh, oh, oh! We got a leak of the thermostat. Ah, oh. well, she's just gonna leak everywhere, Bill. Yep. I've had more water leaks on this one engine than I've ever had on any ever. So I tried a gasket on that thing, and it's one of them chrome jobbers that it's kind of crappy. It's got a groove for an O-ring. I was hoping we'd get lucky and it wouldn't, you know, leak. The O-rings I have, this one's just a little too small. Maybe that'll seal her up. Well, I don't know who sent these out right here. Uh, but you just saved my hiney. But this plug right here, uh, yeah, that's a 5 16 square. Oh, that sucker ain't even tight. <laughs> but I do put that in there to paint. Slap a little tape on it, and we'll just put it right back where she came from. Then the next person who don't have this fancy little tool will be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to stand there, Bill? No. see her leaking yet nope we're gonna cut that because we're not gonna hook up our vacuum advance for a little break in here so bill uh, made a good point instead of just trying to fire it up we need a spin on it rotating it letting the crank rotate and letting the distributor now crank the oil pump uh is probably pretty good for it along you know simple terms yeah we hit 50 now 50 that's yeah. pretty good for just cranking. Yep, yep, that's really good. She ain't gonna fire off without no gas in her. I did get gas this morning, so let's go speed uh, speed shooter in here. Oh, apparently I need a gas cap. This one works for now, but you get a little gas splashed around and it probably ain't gonna seal too good. Hot County Racing Team Division. I 
ain't got none up here yet. So just pulled our uh, hose off here where we could try to pull vacuum on it. And all I'm doing is pulling vacuum right there because that's loose. Bill, I don't think I tightened anything on this whole wagon. Don't ride in it, it's gonna fall apart. <laughs> There it goes. I'm getting old, Bill. I never had this much trouble on any of my other builds. Let's see if she'll splash now. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever broke in a small block Chevy, guys. Uh, I'm glad Bill's here with me. We did slap our timing light on. We're re ready to do a quick time. Got a screwdriver handy where we can set idle. And I did just run us a jumper wire. She may be a hair short. No, she'll reach. Just got the coil hot, guys. And I'm going to work this. And I ain't going to work the camera too much because this is a little more important than working the camera. So be patient with me. As it started to warm up and we're trying to get it of course smooth sounding you know where we've ran out of as far as we can uh, adjust on it there yeah. vacuum canisters hitting so uh yeah we're, we're gonna let her cool off a second we'll pop that distributor up out of there and try again well it should have been dead money and now we get to get her back to top dead center with uh, a nice hot engine <laughs> Bill ran home to swap out his bicycle for his automobile. Ah, I'm just going to call this the curse of the red distributor. That's it. Distributor's out. And wild man Bill's back. Perfect timing. 30 minutes later, she stabbed back in. I don't know why it would not go in. Bill watched me. I said, Bill, I'm done. I don't know. Flicked it like that. And then my SOB literally fell in. Fell in. Fell in. <laughs> so when we get her tuned out i'm wanting her to end up kind of back there where it looks good of course we had to crank her back that way so right now we've got her stabbed with this being number one so when we fire her up and go to crank on her getting her running smooth again she cranks back that away there yep there's the ratchet and there's the socket right there god bless how long do we look for that for? Another 30? <laughs> yeah. Down the drain? Hey, if this was Hollywood television, they would have been like, we just built this, and then next cut, would it be going in the backyard? Hey, everything fired up perfect. Oh, but yeah. Oh, they wouldn't yeah. have showed all the leaks and the uh, trials and errors oh, yeah. and, you know, head up the assery. Well, they can use the camera to make themselves look good. <laughs> we know different. <laughs> Right. Oh, it ain't plugged in. God bless it. Can't imagine why it ain't running. I don't know, being on television sounds pretty good right now, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All these problems go away. <laughs>
Well, we gave her her 20 minutes of run time. And uh, everything went pretty good. Oh, there's a wild man Bill back again. He kind of took control there, which was all right. I mean, we just kind of timed it by ear. Guys, it's so loud, it's hard to hear. That timing light I have is a piece of crap. It's worthless. Uh, he dropped her down to idle. I wasn't even ready. That's part of being a YouTuber, Bill. You got to record the stuff. Uh, but it, it was running pretty good. So you go. guys can see on this one she turned purple it don't look like it but it's actually a tin of gold so it, it'll be purple before you know it uh but this side's definitely running hotter all right i think that's the first time i've rolled that up uh, bill went to uncle rick's to grab uh, the timing light when bill gets back i think we're gonna tune on this just a little bit we'll get that distributor locked down we may check a fluid or two and then uh, it's supposed to, I'm gonna take it to the exhaust shop, guys. I'm not, I don't know if you've ever looked into building exhaust on these, they're not fun. Uh, I think it's definitely a car where you wanna have proper equipment to do it. And uh, we're gonna take it to someone who can just knock it out for us. I went ahead and threw our seat back in. Just a couple bolts for now, just that'll hold it. Looks like the leading edge of our pan gasket here is leaking some. Hey, these did hold. I guess I just realized that. I wish I had a dust cover where we could go ahead and slap it on, but I ain't got one right now. I noticed that uh, we shook out a couple of our studs. Shook them out of that old manifold. Old purple people eater. I think this little list here before I, uh, before I forget again. You better keep your little digits clear of these finger pinchers. That sucker get your finger, it'll take it off. You and Rick weren't doing some talking, were you? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen this thing off the jack stands in a minute. Looks so much better. We get the cobwebs knocked off of her. She'll look a little better, too. Here, you tune on it some, Bill? Yeah. I said what the hell because we can't see the timing mark at all even though we use those marks to get it fired up or you know it's running pretty good uh, but anyhow I think we're gonna have to verify top dead center as far as we're gonna have to mark our bouncer ourselves for now we're gonna fire it up tune it by ear because you can hear when it's happy ahead and topped off our transmission fluid and you may notice i slapped a chrome air breather on it just because this hood dust uh that does drop some rust here or there and we don't want that going down our carburetor i just talked to my buddy who's gonna do the exhaust he said missions ago if we want to drop it off so we're gonna go get the trailer now what we'll y'all have seen in the background of this video but you ain't seen uh yet on the channel is the new tow pig here it's hot out there in the sun yeah it is that's why we're about to take this one with air conditioning no the the brake or the bearing something was messing up on travel she had a smoky rear end it didn't smell like brake but it may have just been uh, but either way uh we're gonna take this thing i've had it for a couple months now i ain't showed y'all uh i just filled it up for the second time and it's only at like three eighths of a tank if that tells you how much i've driven it i ain't even put 100 miles on it in two months <laughs> I really wanted to wait until I could afford a diesel, uh, but no more than I need to do the bigger towing, guys. I think that thing will be just good for us. I hate working on newer vehicles, so I bought one that don't need nothing. Uh, she's pretty low miles. It has like 120,000 on it. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I hopped on it, even though it was a gas burner. I don't think we'll outwork it by any means, and I ain't done diddly to it, except make sure she got a Puddin's Fab Shop sticker on the back. Let's go get the trailer, Bill. Bill, I was nervous to show people the new tow pig. I think they're gonna think we're getting too fancy here. You know who told me to buy it? Ashley. She's like, you deserve it, buy it for yourself. I'm like, yeah. But you know what she says? She goes, you act like you're buying a brand new truck. She goes, it's only two, 
two years newer than our Yukon for crying out loud. Almost 20 years old. To me, I still consider this a new truck. This is like a new, yeah, new me, truck. Me too. <laughs> Get her hooked up to the fancy tow pig. Oh, Rupert, come tow my wagon for me. Rupert's my butler. He does all the stuff behind the scenes, Bill. Everyone just thinks I do it. <laughs> all right, got her hooked up. Good deal. Like she wants to go get some exhaust she just whoop crawled right up it yeah it just crawled right up like it was nothing then 373s baby <laughs> yeah, quite getting excited bill put some miles on it going to strap on each corner we gotta make sure she's safe Watch out guys, we got plumb crazy. We just drove her, you know, good 150 foot. Uh, Brandon's gonna start on it next week, start knocking the exhaust out for us. And I'm getting pumped guys, because just driving it there, I mean, I know it's silly to say everything felt good, but being that low, you can already, I can already tell it ain't gonna beat your teeth out or nothing driving it and it looks slammed right there. Got them fatties looking good in the back. Yep, I'm pretty pumped. So that's it, guys. That's it for this video. Uh, we have another week with this wagon. It should have exhaust on it. We can tune on it. We can get some interior back on it. We gotta get bumpers. It still needs a little bit, but she'll be ready to, you know, maybe throw mama in the front seat, take her get ice cream sundae at the Brahms or something. I appreciate you guys watching, coming back. Now, I'm sorry it took so long to get the wagon to this point, but life was crazy for about a month and a half. And luckily uh, it's kind of tamed back out some. So thank y'all for watching. I'm on the Instagrammer. Do not forget, okay? Releases, puddingsfabshop.com. You want to get them good deals while they're hot. And if you are going to get them 4th of July shirts, get them quick. They're going to go fast. And the quicker they order, the quicker we can ship them to hopefully get them to you before the 4th of July. I'm on the Instagram. I'm on the Patreon. And I will see you guys next time. But do not forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I can't wait till I see you again.